just to be clear, this, this is not contempt. So last week, Friday, as many of you know, as some of you know, I'm a, I'm a, a, a state witness in a case against this Chilo Fiat Tayali. Now, let's be clear. Some of you followers of him, because I know some of you are on here, and, and honestly, I don't like the fact that you guys are on here. I don't. I would prefer that you stay within your lane, within his circumference. But if you are a Chilofia Tayali follower, I don't want you here. I don't. I don't want you to taint me. Okay? I, I simply don't want you here. But some of you Chilofia Tayali followers will jump on here and say, but why can't you just forgive your friend? Eh? Why are you testifying against him? What, do you not know? Do you not know that not too long ago, Chilofia Tayali was a state witness in a case, in a case against Wachishimba Kambuidi? And it was, it, was, it was on the strength of Tayali's testimony that Wachishimba Kambuidi was found guilty and sentenced. Do you not know that? What, you don't know that? You've forgotten that? Because <clears throat> this is what I find disturbing and interesting about Chilifia Ta'ali followers, is that they seem to defend him in things that he himself has done to other people. Ta'ali is not new to this thing about testifying against other people and having, and having, and having them sent to prison. He's done that before. He's testified against Bakambuidi. He was a state witness in a case against Bajishin Bakambuidi. Bakambuidi was ultimately found guilty, was sentenced because of Tayali. So far be it from you guys to start preaching to me about, no, how can you do that to your friend? Well, first of all, let's be clear. He's not my friend. Shalifia Tayali is not my friend. Let's keep that clear. Because, <clears throat> you know, you guys, some of you guys, you're so spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. Everything you shroud in scripture. No, that to forgive and forget, that is your friend. That's got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing. To, you're, you're, mix, you're comparing apples with oranges. You're trying to mix oil with water. It doesn't work. And that's not the, that's not the case. If there's... If there's an issue that has to be dealt with through the courts of law, it's got nothing to do with forgiveness. It's got everything to do with justice. And besides, guys, Tayali had my friend killed. In Samansa, Chilifia Tayali set in motion a series of events that led to the ultimate and untimely death of my friend in Samansama. You think that I wouldn't testify against Tayali? Of course I would. I'll do it with my eyes wide open and a clear conscience. Let's be clear about that. So anyway, so here it is. Friday, I went to the courthouse and I'm sitting in the courthouse, in the courtroom, sitting in the courtroom, in the corner. And here comes Chilifia Tayali. He walks up to me, boy, very, in a very, in a, he thinks that he's intimidating. But let's not forget, Chilifia Tayali is a short little guy. Did you guys not know this? I'm not body shaming him. I'm just trying to explain to you that I don't know where Tayali's confidence comes from in terms of his physical prowess, because he has none. There is no physical prowess. I mean, just because just the guy jogs, it doesn't mean that he's a powerhouse. The guy is, is a little runt. He's, he's like this short. In Zambia, we don't do this. We do this. He's a little short guy. And I'm a big guy. I mean, I'm, I'm a big guy. And I know there's some of you in the comment section, you're going to start saying, but well, size doesn't matter. It does in some cases. It does in this case. Okay. So Tiali walks up to me. You know, he sort of trudges towards me. And he says, you you And this is in the courthouse. This is in the courtroom. And then, you know, he's pointing at me. I'm sitting down. He's standing up. He's standing up looking down at me. And I'm sitting down looking up at him. Now, <clears throat> For those of you that know anything about body language, that's a power play. Now, you have to understand what's, when someone is towering over you, when someone is, is, is standing above you and yelling at you, in their minds, they are in a position of power. In their minds, they think that they, 
have vanquished you. Now, if you're going to engage in a physical confrontation, the best thing you do in that scenario is you stand up. Now, had I stood up, I would have towered over Teale, because Teale is a little short guy. He's, he's like a little tiny guy. So had I stood up, I would have towered over him. So the moment had I stood up, he would have then changed from speaking down at me because I was in a, a sitting position. Had I stood up, he would have been looking at me doing this. Now, let's, let's be clear about something. And, and I want you to hear me out. I don't want to gloss over this. I don't. I, I want you guys to get the, the, I want you to get my line of logic. Hear me out. He got upset because I make reference to his wife in this way. I've always said it, and I will keep saying it, and I will say it again. Tayali is very disrespectful to that Ethiopian girl. Very disrespectful. Now, before you start saying to me, but well, that's his house. That's his business. No, it's not his business when he brings it on social media. When he starts saying, my wife is away in Ethiopia. I'm accepting applications from you young girls to give me sexual favors. Why list my wife is away? And then here's the thing. This is what I find annoying, is that he's trying to normalize a very abnormal behavior in front of you lot. And there are some of you that are so impressionable, you find that funny. You find it hilarious. You think it's normal for a married man to disrespect his spouse on social media under the umbrella of your, I'm just joking. I'm just making fun. I'm just making jokes at the expense of your wife. That's why we step in. That's why to angry. I'm about to, you ain't going to pick up a social media. Watch you post up a social media. Watch up a today's saddle on cash. Oh, social media. Ule ba salula. Uleti yo hali ya kuku Ethiopia. So ine imwe wa kashana imwe. Leke ni mwe wa kwete ama applications. Muke isi muka, muka, muka mbele po ine. Because I'm here kunga nda by myself. Musalu la. And you think it's normal. Eli yo natuwa lando kutu warufianya. Natuwa lando kutu warufianya. Why? Because iwe wali chibika pa social media. Na ifwe. Fwe ba lefo kuchita. Fwe ba lefo kuchita eh, protect this issue. The sanctity. The sanctity of what a marriage should be and the responsibility that you have as an influencer, you cannot peddle that and make it sound normal when you know good and hell well that it's very abnormal. Edio, on top of that, the reason why he can do what he does, but the Munazambi. And I've often said this, and I will keep saying it, and I will not stop saying it. The only reason Tayali gets away with what he gets away with is because he's married to a foreign girl. If that girl was from Shinsari, Naba Fiashi Fiyo in a window, Naba Brothers win a window, you think Tayali can get away with half of that nonsense he does on, on Facebook? He can't. He can't. Why? Because in Tambi, Chakara, in Tambi, to a in Tambi, man, eh? With proper abafiashi, kuti wa yachite fia msalula, pa Facebook, ba akupania. <laughs> na ama brothers wino wino. Bwana, kuti ba akusansa, ba nisa feti wena weka tayari, kala panshiwe, ule, ule seba nyo mwachewe so, eh? Chilishani, ule ichindika. But he knows, he's not, he, he's, he doesn't worry about that because he knows Sega is an Ethiopian girl that doesn't have any family here. She's basically on her own. There, I said it. Is that, is that difficult? Is that difficult for you to accept? And anytime you get an influencer that normalizes what is abnormal, you Dwanzi followers, you think it's funny. It's not funny. There's nothing funny about that. That's the reason. That's what I talk about. So here it is. He came to the courthouse. You know, he's a little guy. He's a tiny little short guy. And he's talking down to me. He's threatening to, to, to hit me and, and not to beat me, to hit me. 
And I'm sitting down there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm sitting on the bench. In my mind, I'm thinking, if I stand up, this is going to escalate. It's going to escalate. Because he wasn't joking, I wasn't joking. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to sit here. So he starts yelling. And, and the longer I sat, the louder he yelled. And the louder he yelled, the more people came into the, into the courtroom. Now, at this time, I'm thinking to myself, I hope somebody records this, you know, because typically you're not supposed to record anything in the courthouse. But nobody did, you know. Now, what Tayali doesn't realize, and, and this is something that I want him to know right now, he doesn't realize that all of that showboating, all of the threats, all of the, you know, the bravado, and, you know, he's a little guy, he's a little short guy. All of this stuff, he doesn't realize that I'm actually a karate expert. Some of you don't know this about me. Did you know this about me? Did I ever tell you about this? Well, let's be clear. Maybe not an expert, but I did take a karate class when I was in my, 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 my teen years. Okay, let's, let's be clear about that. And I'm not joking when I say that. I took a karate class, a very intense course in karate. I went up to the yellow belt. OK, I didn't get up to green, but I was almost there. And what Tayali doesn't realize, and this is what I find interesting about this whole thing, is that he doesn't know how close he came to disaster. I mean, when he was threatening, in my mind, I was thinking any moment now. I'm going to execute the court of blood technique. Now, some of you may not know. Some of you may not have heard of the court of blood technique. But the court of blood technique, you see these two hands here? Lethal weapons. These are lethal weapons. They've been known to stop someone who didn't know that it was coming. Now, I was going to execute the court of blood technique. And let me explain what the court of blood technique is. It's the court of blood technique is where I strike him and a court of blood comes out. The man hits the ground. He's dead in three and a half seconds before he hits the ground. That's called the court of blood technique. Now, everything in me, okay, let's be clear, I did everything within my power to withhold and restrain myself from performing the court of blood technique. Because I knew, I said, listen, if Kotaali keeps talking, boy, and I execute the court of blood technique, man's going to be dead. I'm going to have a murder charge on me. They're going, listen, not only am I going to cease to be a, a state witness, they're going to carry me out of here in shackles because now... Now, I got, a, I got a murder charge, but I didn't want to go that way. I didn't. I restrained myself for such a time as this, the word of God says. I restrained myself. I held myself back because I knew in that very moment that if I gave in to my urge, if I acquiesced, if I succumbed, if I yielded, to my desire to knock his head clean off, I'd have a murder charge. And who needs the aggravation of a murder charge? I mean, goodness, I got a family, man. I got a wife, I got kids. Who needs that aggravation? Who, who needs the aggravation of going to prison on a murder charge because I executed the court of blood technique? I'm not doing it. I am not doing it. If Tayali goes to jail, if he goes to prison, he's going to go to prison. But, but far be it from me to murder him or to kill him because of the court of blood technique. I'm not doing it. All right. So that's what happened. So anyway, so, you know, he starts yelling. And so I said to him, I said, look, you better step back. You better step back. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And then finally, the, the court officers started telling him, they said, look, Mr. Tayali, that yelling that you're doing, this courthouse is not for that. You'll get in trouble for that. So he walks out of the door. And when he gets to the door, he turns around and he says, if you're man enough, come outside and let's deal with this man to man. And I, I said to him, I said, Tali, you're this short. And, and, and the court of blood technique, boy, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I said to him, I said, you're going to be in a world of hurt, Tali. You know, I'm, I'm not your run of the mill guy you know these hands they made it look, look simple to you 
But these things are lethal, man. I mean, these, these things, these, these things will knock you out. I will knock the block off of you, I said to him. I said, I'll, I'll hit you so hard, it'll rattle your ancestors. That's what I said to him. I said, boy, I tell you what, I will knock you upside your head so hard, you will forget your name. You think you're six feet tall by the time I'm done with you. But anyway, I didn't do it. You know, and thank God I didn't do it. Well, that's what happened. Now you run. You run and tell that. Ha, ha, ha.